Hello and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Saturday, September 2nd. By the way, we will be out this coming Monday for Labor Day. Moving on. Just hours after photos leaked of the upcoming Tesla Model 3 refresh, Tesla officially unveiled its highly anticipated facelift. But it's much more than just some cosmetic changes. Consequently, this was actually after I finished making Quick Charge on Thursday, but oh well. The refresh includes the facelift of the front end design, interior changes such as more screen space, including a rear display, and increased range. Tesla says that the refresh replaces more than half of the parts in the vehicle, although we're not sure how they measure that. The most striking change is obviously the new design, which keeps most of the same look of the current Model 3, but changes the front end to look sleeker, removing the somewhat bulbous bump in the front end. Tesla says that the refreshed Model 3 will have longer range, showing an 11-12% to improvement, and in this case they published the WLTP ratings for the existing and the prior Model 3. The vehicle also removes the steering column stocks, now having turn signal buttons on the steering wheel itself. Tesla also announced improved Bluetooth microphone performance, updated sound system, cushier seats, quiet interior, customizable interior ambient lighting, and a larger rear trunk. Changes are now live on Tesla's European site, where the refresh Model 3 is now available for order. Tesla has not yet announced when deliveries will begin for the North American market, or right-hand drive markets like the UK. Tesla has cut the price of its full self-driving software by $3,000, now to $12,000, down from $15,000, at least in the US. As was the case during the last price change, the subscription price remains the same, $200 a month. But if you want to subscribe with a car that's bought between late 2016 and mid-2019, Tesla will still charge you $1,000 for hardware that theoretically you already bought. But moving on. Unfortunately, the price drop has not been echoed in other territories, at least not yet. It's still listed as $6,800 UK dollars and $59,600 Norway dollars, the same that it was before. Now, Tesla has been on a bit of a tear when it comes to price drops this year, massively slashing prices of vehicles multiple times and then gaining access to the full tax credit in the US. This makes the Model 3 quite a deal, but more price drops are coming. And how do I know this? Tesla has cut prices on the Model S and X with price drops of 15 to 19 percent, not just in the US, but all around the world on all trim levels. Unfortunately, this does not include the brand new standard range model, which was introduced just two weeks ago. And actually, that model is no longer available. The standard range model S and X is gone after the recent release, but hey, the price cuts, that make it a lot easier. This means that the cheapest Model S and X is now cheaper than it was earlier in the week. Today's so-called base model now has the larger battery with an estimated EPA range of 405 miles for the S and 348 for the X. And as for the another stealth price drop, it came through in the form of paint colors. Now all of them are included in the base price. But wait, there's more. Due to a quirk in how the U.S. federal tax credit works, the Model X can actually be cheaper than the Model S after incentives, at least if you get the absolute base trim. According to new pictures of a prototype, Tesla is testing the Cybertruck with the dual motor powertrain. We also got a good look at the interior. The pictures leak through the Cybertruck Owners Club and appear to have been taken at a testing facility or a port. One of the main interesting things about the siding is that on the inside there is a sticker under the hood that confirms that the Cybertruck powertrain is dual motor. A Tesla has talked about having a single, dual, or a tri-motor version of the truck, and now at the very least we get confirmation that they are testing a dual motor version. There could be different versions out there testing, but for simplicity Tesla generally focuses on producing a single version of a new vehicle for the launch. We also get a rare glimpse of the inside of the electric truck, particularly the back seat, which does look to offer a decent amount of space. Many have wondered how the backseat occupants will fare, especially in headroom, considering the roofline slopes appear to be quite steep. From this angle, it appears that the top vertex begins much higher than previously believed. Rivian has announced that it has hired Dr. Jell Gruner as Chief Commercial Officer and President of Business Growth. Gruner brings over 25 years of auto industry experience to Rivian, 
most recently serving as the CEO of Porsche Cars North America. Before joining Porsche, Gruner was Porsche's Global Vice President of Marketing and Chief Marketing Officer. Prior to that, he worked as the Director of Strategy at Mercedes-Benz for over six years. He also serves on the board of Livewire, the electric motorcycle division of Harley-Davidson. Gruner joins Rivian at a very critical time when the EV maker ramps up production and profitability. Hyundai Motor Group and LG Energy Solutions are going to inject an additional $2 billion into their U.S. EV battery factory. The two companies will 50-50 open the battery plant in Bryan County, Georgia. It will be adjacent to Hyundai Motor Group's Meta Plant, America, currently under construction. The annual production capacity of Hyundai and LG's new plant will be 30 gigawatt hours and will be able to support the production of 300,000 EVs annually. With the $2 billion that have just been recently announced, the EV factory and the battery factory together, those represent more than $7.5 billion invested in Georgia. In today's community comment found on YouTube, most of you expressed your displeasure with the announcement that the Biden administration is offering billions of dollars in grants and loans to help out legacy automakers. Yeah, this was not my favorite story to report either. It's one of the same old, same old things in all the bad ways. The sentiment in my mind, I think, is best reflected by the words of Ralph Nader, who in the documentary Who Killed the Electric Car said, once those legacy automakers get a long lead time, they go to work, eroding and eroding. And when the deadline approaches, they say it can't be done and there will be terrible consequences. Well, here we are now, and it seems that preparation and innovation is not rewarded, at least not by the government. I really don't know what can be done about all this. It seems like generations of this large-scale problem are already afoot. And that would be very hard to dismantle, especially if you're just some schlub from the working class like myself. By the way, as a reminder, we'll be out for Labor Day on Monday, and we'll see you again on Tuesday. Thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.